What's going on, y'all? So What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for a whole new what it is. Y'all, I'm giving it to y'all early because, well, is it really early? Well, it is. Because usually it be late. <laughs> it be later in the day. But anyway, um, girl... I'm really just doing this video because I got some, it's some stuff that's going on and I was debating whether or not to do my videos, but I'm just going to continue to do it because it's going to keep my mind off of it. But anyway, um, and when it's time to tell you, I'll tell you, but moving on from that, anyway, I hope everybody has been having a good day. Um, mine's kind of started off really, really crappy. And we're not going to get into that. But um, I hope y'all been enjoying the weather. The weather is weathering in the direction that I want it to go. As you can see, hoodie is back on. And um, yes. But anyway, I'm not really trying to be on here that long, as I say. But let's just get up into this, what it is. Um, First of all, we have got to say rest in peace to Suzanne Summers. Um, Suzanne Summers, if some of y'all that don't know, cause y'all probably a little bit young, but, uh, Suzanne Summers, she, she was one of the girls on, uh, Three's Company. I think her name was Christy on Three's Company. I gotta look it up. I can't remember. I never watched Three's Company. First of all, it was before my time, but I do know of John Ritter and he's passed away as well. Yeah. I think he had a dissected aorta or whatever, aneurysm and all that stuff that just happened on the set when he was on a uh, a Simple Rules. That was my show, too. Okay. Um, but I've seen clips, and I know what the, uh, the show is about. What I did see of hers was Step by Step. Now, see, back in the day, some of y'all don't know. Some of y'all don't know. Y'all so used to this mess that's out now. Okay? The little TV shows and stuff that's out now. But back in the day, we had some good shows. TGIF. Um, UPN, The CW, all of that. We had some good shows, okay? And Step by Step was one of those shows, you know? And um, she was the mama on there. So, you know, that was that was one of those little... That was when the white shows, no shade, because that was predominantly, like it still is today, predominantly those type of sitcoms was on. And they was actually really good. I ain't even gonna told you. I ain't even gonna lie. They was actually really good. And we watched them every freaking week. Um, she also gave us The Thigh Master, Okay, like back in the day, like in the early 80s or whatever, early 80s, late 80s, it was a time where some of these actresses or whatever, they used to come out with these workout tapes. Um, very famously, uh, Jane Fonda, you know what I'm saying? Suzanne Summers was one of them as, as, uh, as well. But um, I had no idea, you know, she was 76. She died like on Saturday morning, a couple of days right before her birthday, which was on Monday. 77. Oh, God, that's so crazy. Um, She was battling cancer. And I had no idea that she was battling cancer. And I think at one point she said she had been battling cancer all her life. Because when I was looking up the information for it, it was like, you know, she'd been battling cancer for like 50 years. And I said, wait a minute. How do you survive with cancer in your body for 50 years? Thank God that she did, or 50 plus years after she got diagnosed. Um, come to find out, she had got diagnosed with, I think, like skin cancer when she was in her 20s, or when she was 20 or in her 20s, you know? Um, and then I think it went away, well, went into remission, came back, um, then went away again. It was aggressive, same thing. And then I think this time it was breast cancer. So she basically has been battling cancer for the majority. No, the yeah, the majority of her life, you know. And I think she has two kids and a, a husband that she leaves behind. Um, they was about to do something for her birthday and now they can't do it because now they got to plan, you know, funeral arrangements and stuff. That is so sad. That is so sad. May she rest in peace. I was wondering, like, we ain't hear nothing about Miss uh, Suzanne Summer in a long time. And then when we finally do, that's what happened. But, you know, uh, condolences to her family. Now, let's get on to the debauchery and debauchery and the mess. Follow up. <laughs> because I need to make this clear. 
because this is going to be the last time I speak on it because it's not affecting me the way that it's affecting everybody else for some reason. And maybe because it's, I can see exactly what's going on. Um, this whole Jada Pinkett situation. Okay. Jada Pinkett Smith. Now, from what people was telling me about the divorce and stuff, that was like, you know, Will, the only way that, and I did think I said this last week when we was talking about it, um, the only way that Will, that there would be a divorce going on between Jada and Will is if Jada was to file. Now, people were saying that I was saying was like, you know, it took for his ex to file papers was he married to her or whatever or to leave the relationship because he didn't want to you know regardless of the fact that the relationship wasn't working he didn't want to or whatever i don't know how true that is but that's what people are saying um so that's why i was saying like it was an interview that happened literally i don't know if it was yeah i think it was right after i did the what it is it probably was that friday or something like that that she did with hold up copy or was it robin roberts one of them one of the black ladies, news lady that we like. Um, basically, what I got out of that interview is that Will and her are not going anywhere. Okay? S sorry to say for those that want to, to break them up and to, you know, um, make them, vilify them and everything. Will and Jada is not going anywhere. And see, this was a prime lesson. Um, her book is out today. And I know people, the thing about this whole situation, all of the revelations that have been coming out, they haven't really been that much of big revelations if you sit back and think about it. Because a lot of the things that have been said, we've heard before, right? And I just don't appreciate, but we know that this is how they do it, especially when it comes to popular black celebrities that um, have a staple in our community, especially and 9 out of 10, it'd be our own freaking media and sources that do this to ourselves or whatever, which it's like you're trying to sabotage. It's like you're trying to, you know, make it so that people can have stuff to say to come against these people, whatever. I don't understand it. But when it comes to Will and Jada, that always happens, okay? It happens with Will when he did his book tour. Y'all do remember that Will also put out a memoir probably a couple of years ago as well. And it was a point in time where people was like, oh, my God, why does he keep on saying all this stuff? Why he keep on doing this? We didn't need to know this. We didn't need to know that. And then the same thing is happening with Jada. Jada is putting out her book. And now people are like, oh, my God, why are we hearing this? Every day is like this is something, something every day. And, oh, she's embarrassing him and all this stuff or whatever. And my thing of it is you guys literally just fell for what media does. Jada Pinkett is on a promo tour, right? But Jada is not going around and just saying stuff every day. She's did a couple of interviews and what people do, especially last week when we start seeing a very much influx of things that was coming out just about every day. She did an interview and they took splices of the interview and they released it this day, that day, this day, that day. And they took expert excerpts of her book and they released it this day, that day, this day, that day. So it made it look like, you know, she's just constantly talking and she really wasn't. You know what I'm saying? Did one major interview and this, 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 this. And of course, if you have a book coming out, you're going to do promo. They're going to ask you about your book. They're going to pull out some of the juiciest parts of it to get people, wet people appetite to make you want to read it and go buy it. Um, same thing they did with Will. You know, we was all like, why we keep on hearing all this stuff? Because he has a book deal out and he has, you know, to drum up attention and, and, and people wanted to read it or whatever, buy it, you know, spend their money on his uh, book. And at the end of the day, a lot of the stuff, the whole situation with them being separated, he spoke about that already. So it really wasn't a big shot. Um, he spoke about a lot of the stuff that Jada has already spoke about that she put out a lot. That's what I'm saying. So for people to say that she's out here embarrassing this man constantly by putting and revealing all this information, half the information he has already put out. And if you go back and you look at some of the interviews that he's done in the past, same thing. So he's not being embarrassed. He's hasn't come out and said that he was embarrassed. He's not even moved by it. If anything, he said that it just woke him up after he read the uh, memoir. And again, like I said, 
a lot of to you would be foolish to think that she did not talk to him about everything that she was going to put up in that book. He did not read it before she went out there and did what she, you know, discussed the book or whatever. And they weren't in agreement. You, you, you have to be foolish. They work as a unit. You know, when they said the red table talk situation with the August Alcina, um, he suggested and he requested to be on the red table talk. He wanted to talk about that. And on that, basically, even August had told us, and which we didn't really catch, but now it makes complete sense that they were not together during that time. They were not together during that time when Jada and August had their thing. So technically speaking, given their arrangement, she didn't cheat on him. She didn't have an affair. They were separated. They're still separated. And at this point in time, I'm pretty sure he didn't have, he, he's been linked with other people as well. So, you know, but because it's Jada, it, 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 because this is such a male identified world, people automatically just want to throw all the blame and vilify the woman in the situation and, you know, make it look like he's the crown prince and he's done nothing wrong besides slap that man on, on TV. And I'm just like, you know, it's just not that. And I love me some Will Smith and I love me some Jada and I don't care what comes out. Regardless, I'm going to still support them. I'm going to still support them. I'm going to still be a fan of them. I don't have an issue with them. Do I think that we know a little bit too much? Yes, but I'm still going to read the book, okay? I already got it downloaded, you know, saying it came out yesterday. I'm about to read the book, okay? And so, you know, it is what it is. Um, Because I'm grown enough to know that every relationship is different. I'm grown enough to know that you should not be out here saying relationship relationship goals for these celebrity couples or whatever because you don't know what goes on behind closed doors, okay? And it just is what it is. And if people, I am also grown enough to know that we are living in a time and age where people are not doing conventional marriages, okay, or conventional relationships. People are doing what works for them. Not what works for society. Not what works for you. So you can't sit here and judge how they do and deal with their relationship just because it's not the way that you would do with it. Do with yours. You're not them. You know what I'm saying? Victims, this victimization of Will, this villainization of Jada, it's all wrong. Jada and Will, they're no victims. Jada and Will, they're no villains. They're just living their life. They're promoting stuff. And that's just what it is. You don't want to hear it, just fast forward. You don't want to hear it, mute it. You don't want to see it, block it. That's all, okay? This whole people going on tirades and, oh, she's embarrassing. She's emasculating him. She's this, she's that, she's that. If Will felt that way, Will would have been gone, okay? And I heard that they ain't got no prenup because they felt like they were supposed to be together forever. And some people are going to use that and say, well, that's the reason why he didn't want them to go. Uh, he ain't finna, uh, you know, file for divorce because he don't want her to get half his stuff because they do live in California or whatever. Baby, I really don't feel like that. I really feel at this point, Will will give her whatever she wants. And I don't feel like Jada is a greedy person would even try to do something vindictive like that to try to take his stuff away from him. She's been very much the supportive wife. But at the same time, she has her own situations and he has his as well. Um, what? One second. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, he has his own situation. She has her own situation. Ain't nothing going on. So I'm, I'm just really over people just trying to be you know, so coming down on her and especially like the men, we, well, I expected the men to do that because that's just what they do. And I just, uh, it's just like really dumb at this point. Um, the only thing that I will agree on is I'm tired of hearing about the Tupac situation. As I said last week, I'm tired of hearing about Tupac because, um, we know. And it was people that are grown as hell that could not understand what she was talking about when she said that Tupac is her soulmate, but they were never together. And it was like a platonic soulmate. Do you not understand 
um, people was like, how can you be platonic with somebody and then be married to them or whatever or not be married? Some shit like that. I'm just sitting here like, are we really dumb? You can have soulmates that are not your partner. You can have friendship soulmates, okay? And I, I learned all about that. This is somebody that is really, really close to you that's going to be your day one that never failed you or whatever that you have this deep, deep, deep connection with. But it's not on a sexual level. It's not on a romantic level or anything. That's exactly what platonic, platonic means, okay? And it's just really ridiculous that people are just not grasping that. And I just feel like people falling into the trap of just trying to do what the media wants you to do, and that's to hate this woman. That's what I feel. I really feel it. And, I, and again, I would say misogyny. Misogyny is playing a whole big role in it because now is Jada's the victim. I mean, um, Will is the victim. Will is no victim. Will take, they had his part up in this whole situation too. Will gave his blessings for him, uh, uh, Alcina and, and, and Jada to do whatever because they wasn't together. It is what it is. Um, read the book, okay? Listen to it if you want to. That's all I can say about it. I, I It ain't bothering me like that because it ain't affecting my life. And y'all that talk so much mess about this lady so big, okay? Cussing her out. You got Dr. Umar. Nigga, you is in a freaking car in the dark. You couldn't even turn your car lights on and you up here talking mess about Jada. Stephen A. Smith, a freaking bachelor who ain't never been married, ain't even in no relationship. You got the nerve to be talking about um, um, this woman or whatever who is in a relationship, who's in a marriage, no matter how we look at how successful or not. See, this the moral of the story is we just need to stop looking at people's relationship and be like, oh my God, I love them so much together. Quit it. Because we don't know what's going on. It could be a whole bunch of crap going on behind the scenes, okay? But um, y'all talk so much mess about her. Y'all got her show back. Red Table Talk coming back next year, okay? And just because I ain't even going to lie to y'all and I ain't going to hold y'all, listen, I do not look at talk shows, okay? But I'll be tuned in to Red Table Talk just because, all right? That's just all I want to say. We're going to put the kibosh on that. And when I finish reading the book, if I feel like it's some stuff that we want to be talked about in the book or whatever, I'll come back and talk about it. Other than that, that is all. That is it. That is the end of this Jada and Will talk. Let it the fuck go. Another person that also got a book out that came out yesterday was Britney Spears. I also downloaded that book as well. Girl, I'm going to get my reading on, okay? Listen. I, I, memoirs is the way to go for me because I be a little bit nosy, but I don't, I want to act like I don't want to know. But I really do want to know, but it ain't that deep, but I do want to know, you know what I'm saying? But um, the excerpt that came out, just like with Britney, one of the things that came out, and she's in the news right about now because they're talking about it. Um, And it's not that she put it out there. It's because it came from her book, and so... It grabbed the attention and it was a salacious piece of material that people didn't know about. But I'm honestly not surprised by it. Uh, for some reason, I'm just not shocked. You know, some people may be shocked, but I'm not shocked. They said at one point that Justin Timberlake was, you know, um, he was a little bit worried about some of the things that probably would be said in Britney's memoir. And again, this is coming from Britney's truth. This is coming from her perspective of things that happen according to her and her mind and all that stuff. You know, Justin Timberlake is very well welcome and anybody else to put out a book or something, a rebuttal if they want to. But basically the thing they got out is saying that, hold on one second y'all. My bad, uh, my sister called me, had some business to handle, but no. The stuff that got out is that um when Justin and um Brittany was dating, at one point she had became pregnant. Okay, she became pregnant and um they was like now first I was seeing that he said that he ain't want no kids right about now, so he was like you know we gonna have to get a you know get rid of it or whatever. And then I was seeing that both of them were saying that you know they wasn't ready for kids at that point. And truth be told. Um, this may be a shock to some of y'all, but this was a whole different time back in the day, uh, late nineties, early 2000, you know, the pop explosion that then went, uh, Justin and, um, Justin and her got together. It was just like, you know, one of those situations where they were like pop and, uh, prop princess, prop prince and all that stuff. 
Yeah, it would have been very, very much scandalous. It probably would have been looked down upon or whatever. We are living in a different time. And I know people like, um, especially with a certain situation that's going on currently, like, you know, you can have kids and you can still have your career or whatever, but this is back then that they definitely would have shunned her. And the way that they they treated Britney, even in the process of her just living her life or whatever, I was looking at this documentary about her and it wasn't a Hulu documentary. Um, it was something else that I found and it was just the way they was going over the way that, that she was being so scrutinized and talked about because of the way she dressed, because of the way she danced, because of the how she said this or did that or whatever, her subject matters and all this stuff. Mind you, this is at her early stages in her career. This is before the Britney meltdown. This is before the paparazzi was heavily, heavily, heavily on her. You know what I'm saying? These are critics that was just critiquing any and everything that she said and did, but yet the male counterparts was doing the same thing and they weren't getting as much as critiques either. You know, getting a backlash and all that stuff. She constantly had to defend herself. So imagine something like that happening and she got pregnant and she had to keep, and she decided, they decided to keep the baby. Oh yeah, they would have been, oh, well she trapped him and she did this. Oh, it just would have been a mess. It would have been a mess. So I'm not surprised at that. And I don't think that that's something that they should feel bad about. You know, um, given the times, y'all did what was right for them. And if you know that you are not ready to be a parent yet and you have a slip up, and if that's the route you go, I'm a person that's not going to blame you, okay? I don't look down upon anybody who decides to have, uh, give up their kid for adoption, um, aborted or whatever. Is that your body? And if you, you, you got to do what's right for you, you know? And people don't realize that it's a lot to having kids. It's a lot to bearing kids, you know? So, again, you do what's right for you. And they was living in a different time. And, you know, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't have been widely acceptable as it is now. But y'all tell me how y'all feel about that. Y'all going to read Britney book while Britney out there playing with knives and stuff? Anyway, moving on from that. Bow Wow. Bow Wow has some things to say, okay? And honestly, for the first time in a long time, um, I agree with him. Bow Wow basically was saying, where is artist development, okay? Where's freaking artist development? Because it's a lot of artists that's out here that's really doing the things that they need to do, that's putting on uh, real stage productions, that is putting on good shows and putting out, uh shit putting out good music and everything, but yet they are not being looked at. They are not being, um, you know, put out there to the mainstream and, 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 and getting the attention that we see these other artists that are not putting forth the same amount of energy and uh, all of that. He basically said, Can we please bring back artist development at these labels? Do these labels even care about these artists? Y'all be throwing them on the platform knowing they're not ready. A boxer is trained and taught before battle. We just keep throwing these subpar artists out here with no proper training. It's too many real ones out here that uh, on the come up like Simba, Westside Boogie. Um, I can name so many more. Lady London, Lola Brooks. Like new artists that got it, we deserve who deserve to push. Stop pushing that bullshit on us. The fans are waking up, and hip hop is about to change for the better. Stay in the house if you're playing, and move over and let the real ones play. They can't talk. I don't understand what the fuck they're saying. They be dry as hell in interviews. Y'all know I take the stage serious. I don't even want to get on the stage presence. Get on the stage presence. Rapping over vocals. Shit is sloppy out there. Um, we got to clean this up. And I absolutely 100% agree. If you've been watching me, that is exactly what I've been saying. I've been saying this and I wish more people in the industry would do that. Because at this, we would just be speaking out. We are not, and I keep on saying this, oh, I wish we go back to the time where we had artist development, where we had A&Rs, where we had, you know, back in the, uh, they put the, the kids through the stuff, but, you know, had them doing stage presence and actually through media training and all of that stuff. And we can see 
the big difference. Everything is so quick, 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 quick. And what we also got to understand is a lot of these new people that are out now, a lot of them are going the independent route. A lot of them are having an easier way in a sense than what it was back in the day where you actually had to ship out your album or, or your music to this label, this label, find this person, get them to listen to it and hope that they'll uh, um, um, go ahead and put an uh, album out with you and work with you or whatever. Hope they'll sign you to a label and hope that you will actually put some music out instead of just sitting out there on the shelf and, and just waiting to see what's going to happen and never nothing come to fruition. These days, uh, artists can just put up whatever it is that they want to um, online. All you got to do, if you got a YouTube page, put that thing on YouTube. Y'all remember the SoundCloud rappers and all that stuff. And, you know, a lot of these people are getting founded off of TikTok or whatever. So, you know, it's it's, it's much more access. It's more easier. And a lot of people are going independent and things of that such, which I don't blame them for the most part. But the drawback is if you're doing this all by yourself and you just really out here just trying to get famous and you just trying to get, you know, put on or whatever uh, to say that you're here, you're not going to have that person that's going to take you to media training and teach you how to speak in interviews and how to answer certain questions and avoid other questions, how to, you know, develop your stage presence, okay? Because that is a very big deal. How to actually, you know, perform when you're performing. Regardless of if you're a rapper, you can't perform on a stage and give a bomb performance, okay? There have been people that have done that, all right? You know, not saying that you have to get up there and dance, shake your ass, all that stuff, but you just have to have that presence, okay? And when he was talking about them just throwing these new artists out there, I will never forget when I seen Ice Spice at that Rolling Loud or whatever, and they just threw her out there. That was probably one of the first performances at a big crowd that I seen her in, and I was just like, what? And after all this time, and I hate to bring it up, you know, I'm just using her as an example because she she, she literally said, you know, because she was on SNL this past weekend, but she said she is not a lyricist. She don't consider herself a lyricist. I, you can quote, or I'm paraphrasing, that she makes her lyrics simple on purpose. She'll throw a few bars in there here and there, but she makes it simple on purpose because she knows her audience. She knows some of them, it'll go over their head if she make it a little bit too difficult. And that's messed up. That's messed up. And honestly, no shade. I don't, I don't want to feel like I'm, I'm, I'm bashing this girl because I have nothing against her. I'm just saying, like, I really don't understand how Ice Spice has gotten to the point where she at. Yeah, she had a little catchy song. But at the end of the day, the stage presence isn't there. She does the same thing, and she sounds the exact same, just like a lot of these other artists does as well. I wouldn't mind the sound of the same thing. Saying if an artist sounds the same, as long as the stage presence is there, as long as it's entertaining or whatever, I can deal with it. You know, because there's a few of them that's out here that sound the same, but yet they give really good shows, they give really good performances or whatever. But I just don't get it. I don't get it. She's one of those. Um, you got other artists out here that just I don't I don't get it like these new girls these new guys they coming out and they're all doing the same thing sounding the same way oh my god I found I sound so freaking old yo I sound so old <laughs> it is not old it's just that I want better because a lot of these people these new artists that they throw out there I can see the potential a lot of us can see the potential and see yeah y'all get it y'all just need somebody to help y'all develop it and to hone it and to clean it up and tighten it up a little bit like I, f I feel like y'all do these artists disservices just throwing them out there to the wolves like that and they're not ready because these labels are looking just at their bottom line and they want the dollars and all of that stuff it's really messed up but yeah I completely agree with Bow Wow on that for once he got it right um tell me how y'all feel about it Girl, times must be really hard because they said some dudes got caught on video camera stealing hundreds of gallons of vegetable oil from Chick-fil-A down in, I think, Florida. I said, what? <laughs> Girl, they said that they could take the, um, they could take the oil to be recycled, right? And, and they can use it again. And I don't know if they was using it for like diesel food or something like that. Um, but it's a market for recycled oil. <laughs> I don't know why it's so 
funny. They said they found them on the, the surveillance camera and they stole over $2,000 worth of oil. Baby, first of all, I didn't know the restaurants be having that much oil, but did it make sense? They a chicken place, so therefore they got a, and they be frying a lot of chicken. So, you know, you got to have your oil. So I was like, damn, towns is really hard. I remember back in the day, do they still be stealing copper? Copper, you know, they be going out there on the street, getting the copper, getting some money for it and all that stuff. Baby, I remember when they used to do that. Okay, that sounds so very crackish, but that's just what it is, you know. Ugh, times is hard. Anyway, a name that we haven't heard in a minute, Takashi 6 ix this nigga then went over there to the uh, Dominican Republic. I don't know if he was doing music for himself or if he was doing music for his girlfriend, but either way... The girlfriend got into it with the producers or the producers got into it with the girlfriend. He didn't like either they was flirting or it seemed like it. He didn't like what was being said in the studio. He winds up beating up the producers and they wind up getting his ass and taking his ass to jail. Okay. And I'm just sitting here like, so you become a menace over here. You become a menace to society over here in America. And you take your ass over there to the Dominican Republic and you do the exact same thing thinking that basically you can get away with it. All right. Not only that, you being sued because you have not um, paid your credit card bill and you're over $100,000 in debt. OK, with the credit card company. I don't know what it is. American Express is, I guess, the, the, the bank of choice or the credit card company of choice. I don't know. Now, one person that don't get, well, it's some people that don't got American Express. I have an American Express card. OK, but shit, my bill is paid up and I'm not going to use that bitch at all. That's for backup purposes only. That's it. But to be hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt to a credit card company, it is just really, really baffling to me. OK, baffling. You know, um, that's what happens when you be out here trying to live a lifestyle that you know that you can't afford. Because let me just 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 be real. Who the freak is asking for uh, Takashi 6 9 The gig is up. The gig been up for me. It never was on. OK, I just never understood how he got to the point where he was and why people were still on him. And then, you know how this is a no snitch culture. But yet y'all was still cool with him and all that stuff. I, it's, it's really weird. It's really weird. So I feel nothing for him. Baby, lock him up. Throw away the key if you need to. I, I really don't care. Keep him over there. OK, um, so update between Tiger and um black china girl at this point i'm still so baffled by the fact that they said black china or i should say angela white only gets 24 hours a week with her son i really want to know how does she break that down is it like when he go to school he comes to her home she picks him up from school and they spending time together, you know, and um, a couple of hours or so together, whatever. That is crazy. Let me see something. Let's say school get out at 3 o'clock. Let's say he got to be home by 7 or let's say 8 by the latest. So that's like, let me say 3. That's, let's say 5 hours a day. Mm. 5 times 5 is 25. That is four, That's 25 right there. Oh, my God. If it was five hours a day, that's 25. That's over the 24. Wow. That is crazy. Can you imagine? That is weird. But, you know, she was up here trying to get some money from um Tyga for, you know, uh, child support. Now, Tyga said, bump that. We're not going to do that because, listen, he stayed with me the excuse me, the majority of the time, and I pay for everything as it is, and um, what we're going to do is I'm going to file documents to get legal sole custody of him. I said, damn. You know what? Black China, aka Miss Angela White, she has not been right on a good foot ever since she got involved with those Kardashians. She has not been in a good place since she's been involved with those Kardashians. Like, just think about it. Before we heard about the relationship, like, we, she was with Tyga. You know, they was cool. But then they became friends with the Kardashians or whatever. And then Tyga cheated on her with Kylie. Okay. And she was underage. And nobody seems to really talk about the fact that Tyga was with somebody that was underage. Okay. And then, thank God, they didn't have no kids together. And then she messed around and got with, you know, Rob. And then they wound up having a reality show that only went one season. And then you want to go and sue them after that because you felt like they cut it off. And my whole thing is, 
yeah, I really feel like the Kardashians did do some stuff in the background, you know, to shake some stuff up because they was really confused as to why China and Rob was together. I really do feel that way. And I really do feel like they probably felt like, you know, she just wasn't the image that they needed for their family, which is beyond me because you y'all family came up off of a certain image as, as, as it is. Okay. Which I feel is worse, you know, but Hey, it is what it is. Um, but at the same time, they just didn't want that riffraff. That's what they probably call it. That riffraff to be around them. Okay. Um, it was just too much drama. And so they probably plied the scheme to get them off the show, which they probably didn't have to do much because they got their little influence, you know, but at the same time on the opposite side, the show was called Robin China, right? Robin China had broke up by the time the season had been over with. And he putting out revenge porn and all this stuff against her. Like, no, it's over and done with. Why would you want to come back for a second season? I know you need a check, but baby, it wouldn't be no Robin China because y'all not together. And he don't even like to be on film like that. So like, it just didn't, it didn't, it didn't even make sense to do the lawsuit. But then again, I understood why she did it, but I just knew that she was going to win. And then it's like, ever since then, it just, it just really been downhill for China. Uh, Miss Angela White. So I, I really don't know. At this point, it is looking like Tiger is the more stable parent. But um, you know, I'm I hate that she in this situation. But I really feel like at this point, I need Angela to continue on that journey that she says that she was on, trying to get herself together and really get herself together. You know, uh, and get herself in a better place before. It's too late. That's all I can say. Moving on. Um, I've been seeing this story, but I've never said anything about it. It's about this lady, 93 years old. Um, her name is Josephine Wright, and she lives in Hilton Head, South Carolina. Now, basically, there is this um, developer that is coming through trying to, um, I don't know what they're trying to build, but basically, they wanted to buy her home. They wanted to buy her property, right? And she was like, no, I don't want to sell you my property because this property that I have and this home that I have has been in my family since the Civil War, okay? And that's history. And honestly, I just, now that I see that it's been in there since the Civil War and all of that, and I looked up some research, how come they couldn't declare the home like a historical site? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a monument. It's something that that's part of history. Right. And so when you got historical sites and stuff like that, you can't build on it or you shouldn't build on it. You can't knock it down. Or you shouldn't, you know what I'm saying? And basically, um, they've been trying to get her land or whatever. And then was trying to sue her, um, talking about her land was on their property that they owned or whatever her home or whatever. And she was like, no girl, my home is like 22 feet away from the road. So what are you talking about? It's not that Tyler Perry didn't bring comes in because he was helping fight the fight for her. And you know, when you get on certain causes like this and you get a celebrity, a big celebrity who actually has a lot of money, sometimes they will hear that person out over the actual person that's in the throes of it all. And unfortunately, it feels as though they are not budging. And I really feel like it's so freaking wrong to just come up and snatch people lands like this. And this has been going on for, for centuries, okay? Uh, for white people, black people, all people. But when it comes to black people, they really just show us no mercy. You already, you know, decrease the value in our property because we're black. Now, the white person be on it, it'll be increased. We've seen examples of that. You know, you redline the, the cities, you redline the neighborhoods and all of that stuff. And you you just 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 make it seem like we're not worth anything. But then you want our, our property. And then because people don't want to sell, you will find any and every way to make it so that they be forced off their land and um, be in dire straits and probably bankrupt or broke because they you didn't put them through so much litigations and, and legal stuff that they got to pay for or whatever. And it's, it's just a mess. You leave them broken destitute so they have no re nothing else to do but to sell you the stuff because they didn't spend all their money trying to fight you knowing that they couldn't win it. And so you got a person like Tyler Perry that comes through, that got the money, the assets, the resources to try to help. And I don't think it's really helping because now he's saying that they saying that he's going to build her home. 
a five bedroom or something type home or whatever for her, her grandkids, and her family. And because at first I was like, you know, the lady 93 years old. By, by, sorry to say, I don't think mama got that many years left. So paying for a home to be uh, built or whatever, I mean, move her into a new home, that's fine. But, you know, she's going to have to wait a while to get into the house unless y'all going to expedite the whole thing up. Um, but then when I realized that it's for the family, so it's another family home, that's a good thing as well. But I still feel like that's that's totally messed up. That's totally messed up. And I am thankful that Tyler Perry, Tyler Perry do be using his, you know, he may be putting out some mm, questionable projects these days. But uh, yeah, I will say he do use a lot of his influence for good. And this is one of those. And I, I can appreciate that because that is so messed up. And to do that, and they always do this to older people, older people as if that that, that is so wrong. Oh my God, that is so wrong. One thing I cannot stand is when people mess with the elderly. I really can't. But um, yeah, I hope everything works out for her. Moving on from that, baby, Hallie fucking Bailey. Little Mermaid got some explaining to do. Ariel, Ariel, what's going on, girl? What is going on? It ain't our business, but the only reason why I'm bringing it up, because I'm confusion. And at this point, you ain't got to say nothing, but baby, the stuff that's coming out, it's just very confusing. And, you know, again, it's not our business, and you ain't got to say nothing, but people speaking on your behalf, and I just really don't like it. <laughs> but they ain't got nothing else to do because they ain't got no choice. It's just like, what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to feel? What are we supposed to think? What are we supposed to do? Because at this point, the rumor has been out there for a minute that Hallie may be preggers, you know? And I was like, at first, girl, no, nah, it ain't happening. It ain't happening. You know, it is what it is. Because I seen to a little flat stomach and all that stuff after all these rooms came out. Then somebody showed me a video Oh my God! When she was on this uh, red carpet with this tuxedo dress, uh, uh, jacket dress on or whatever, and you know she, she had her little boobies out, and so when she turned to the side, you clearly see like a little bump. I said, "Wait a minute, what?" I said, "Oh well, let me keep that to myself because I was just like I, I don't. Nobody has confirmed or whatever, and I, and the person, the account that it was on." I guess they wasn't supposed to put it on there, and I guess it had started to pick up speed because then they had took it down. They took the post down, right? They had deleted it. Next thing I know, we see up in uh, Fashion Week out there in Paris. And then, you know, people were saying that she was pregnant still because she kept on wearing these oversized stuff and all this stuff, whatever. Okay, fine. But then it was this one particular picture when she was in the yellow, and that waist was snatched because that thing was, the, the coat was just pulled so close to you, uh, so close to her. I was like, damn, okay, well, she said no belly. All right, fine. Next thing you know, we see these pictures come out a few days, a couple of days ago or so. She's walking down the streets, probably in L.A. Baggy sweats, oversized sweat, oversized sweatshirt that looked like she had at least 15 layers on, and it was a clear bump. Like a clear bump. Now, again, it looked like she had on 15 layers. And I was just like, oh, Lord. And then the other night, her and her boyfriend was out at the Glamour UK Awards or whatever. Woman of Glamour Awards or whatever. And she had this like baby doll dress on. And it's like, look like a little tutu or whatever. Corset and all that stuff. And it was black. But I couldn't see no bump. <laughs> What's going on? God damn, what's that bump is it, it's playing peekaboo, bitch. They, she said, listen, get whoever can guess what it is. Guess am I or am I not? You know what I'm saying? Uh, you get the prize. But the issue is, because a lot of people are really mad in, in their feelings. And I just don't understand how come, you know, people get so involved. We do get involved in these celebrity lives. But I feel like with this situation... People, again, we grew, a lot of us grew up watching or we seen Hallie and Chloe when they were kids. You know what I'm saying? When they were first, probably like nine, eight years old. Okay. 
and we see them grow into the young women that they are. And we have to remember, they are young women now, okay? They are adults. Hallie is 23 years old. And I feel like what it is like with me, it's just that I just feel like, uh, you know, a baby is a blessing if it is. But I just feel like it's a little bit too soon in a career when you're trying to pop off on your solo career, you know, and you're trying to get momentum for that. But it's not going to hinder her anyway because she has the talent. She has she has it. OK, she really does. Um, So that's just my point about it. But other people, they just don't like the man that she with. They feel like he trapped her if it is. Mind you, there has been no confirmation, no real confirmation from her or her camp. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, people don't like DDG. And people are like, how come they don't like him? And they saying this and they calling him a bum and he got this money or whatever. You know, you could be a rich bum, okay? I just, just, just look into it. Understand the context of it. You know, bum to some people is a state of mind. Bum is the way that you act. You act raggedy, okay? And a lot of, some of the things that he has done recently has been a little raggedy acting okay the alleged sliding into his ex dms you know putting out songs that's basically kind of like a diss to hallie and her career because you jealous or whatever or it comes off like you're bitter and all this stuff but at the same time he is a youtuber that does pranks and stuff like that so what some people are thinking and i didn't even think of this they could have been doing a prank when they did that whole thing uh, i don't know like it could have been a fake baby but i don't know at the end of the day is you is or is you not <laughs> but at the end of the day, don't get me wrong, because I know somebody going to say, it ain't none of my business. You are absolutely correct. At the end of the day, just let these people be what they're going to be, okay? And I did see the Glamour article that is going around right about now. Um, somebody at Glamour had basically messed up, and they inserted a piece of an interview from Chloe's, not Chloe's, but Hallie's interview with the girl from um, Little Mix, Leah, Leah, her interview, and basically had put a quote in there from Holly talking about allegedly being married and allegedly expecting her first. I said, what the fuck? Somebody over there at Glamour is about to get fired because that is a big editorial misstep. Like, how do you not proofread that? And it's the quotes. It ain't even in the actual article. It's the quote. You know how when they had an article and they take a quote from the article and they put it in bold or whatever to grab their attention and then it would come up later on in the article? It's one of those. I said, oh, my goodness. Um, somebody at Glamour about to get um fired, for real, for real. But um, whether it is or whether it's not, I'm pretty sure she's going to be A-OK. -okay. She's going to be fine. So it's not that big a deal. It really ain't. Um, moving on from that. Madonna, she out here on her new tour. Okay, girl, I didn't even know Madonna was on. Her tour is... I knew she was going on tour. I knew she had got sick. I knew they had to postpone it a little bit. But then she came back, and I did not know it was going to be 78 cities. Y'all know how old Madonna is? Madonna is an old lady, okay? She's an older woman. I didn't mean to say it like that. She's an older woman, all right? And I said, damn, Madonna, you about to do 78 shows? She doing five shows. She kicked it off in London, five shows in London. Y'all remember when LaDonna... Uh, LaDonna Madonna was over here, right? <laughs> Madonna was born in the U.S. of A, okay? <laughs> to <laughs> American parents, right? <laughs> Madonna got married to Guy Ritchie, went over there to London and adapted the freaking accent for a time. I was like, girl, now how does that happen? Now how do you go over there to um, the U.K. and adopt their accent, but when they come over here or other people come over to our, our to the U.S., they still keep their accent after all those years? People have been from, uh, lived up in certain countries for many a years and then come over to the U.S. and be here for like 20 plus years and they still have their accent from where they were born. Girl, I was like, Madonna, now how did that happen? How did that happen? Okay, you know, she be cosplaying as a whole bunch of people, but hey, it is what it is. I like Madonna for the most part. I don't give a damn. Madonna is a nasty bitch, okay? And she been one ever since she was um came out onto the scene. That's probably why I like her. You know, she's 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 weird. She has some issues and she makes some questionable choices. And I be looking at her like, girl, what? But you know, for the most part, you can't get me to not like Madonna. I talk about it, but you can't get me to not like her, you know. 
Um, I guess now everybody want to do the little Vogue and stuff, you know, everybody want to incorporate ballroom, you know, and people can possibly say, well, Madonna kind of did it first because she came out with Vogue and all that stuff. Madonna got that shit from the black folks and the, uh, the Latin folks that was in the balls. Okay. You know, she had the, uh, Ninja, House of Ninja, all of that up in the, um, Vogue video. Okay. You know, she got that from us. Okay. Just let you know. Um, and it's just been very, very popular all of a sudden. And I'm actually kind of glad that ballroom and, you know, all of that is getting. Have you let co-workers know what? I don't know what that is. Um, I'm glad it's getting the attention that it needs after looking at polls, after looking at legendary. They need to bring legendary back to HBO. I don't, I don't care how you do it. You need to cut something and you need to bring them back, especially with the explosion of, you know, the ballroom scene and, and, and voguing being put on a national front. OK, um, but the only thing is, I just don't want it to become oversaturized. I don't want to become so commercialized um, that it loses its true meaning and the reason why it was made in the first place by us meaning the people, black and brown people of the LGBT community, you know? Uh, with that being said, you know, Madonna, you, we synced it up in, um, you know, Beyonce in the Renaissance, and now Madonna is doing the same thing, and it's cute. I, 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 it is what it is, because her little daughter was out there doing it. That's what brought it to everybody's attention, because her daughter was out there doing a, um, they was having a ball. That's what it was. It was like they was having an actual ball on stage, and... I said, damn, Madonna. First of all, the little girl is only 11 years old. I did not know that. First of all, I did not know that. I said, well, she was doing the best that she could, and it was cute. You know what I'm saying? Had her other daughter up there judging and all that stuff. It was real nice. But it was one particular scene where she had the dudes come out there, and I don't know if it was like butch realness or, um, oh, my God, what is the category? Uh, yeah, butch realness or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. But I just know them niggas came out there, and next thing you know, they pulling their asses out. I said, oh, my God, what is happening? What is happening? There is men's and thoughts. I said, now, where is the women's at? Where is the women's? Okay? I was just like, oh, this is a lot. Then, do I need to buy a ticket to see exactly what's going on at this Madonna show? It seems like a lot. Of, but then it's Madonna. It's a lot of freak shit that's probably going on, and I like it. <laughs> Shout out to Madonna, crazy ass. Um, Moving on from that. Uh, Sexy Red is pregnant. We know that for sure. If anybody cared. Moving on from that. Um, Nene's son is out of jail. Nene's son is out of jail. Baby, they had him in jail since the last time he talked. We talked about him. He had got arrested July, tw July 3rd. He was on, he was in jail, had on bond for $6,100, right? Um, and this was for him out there doing drugs, but either he had got caught with some drugs, he was out there lurking in somebody's house, you know, at, uh, on the old property where they used to look at or whatever, be at. Um, and they said the bell broke down from, this is how it was the breakdown of it. $1,850 for loitering, you know, and then it was a $1,850 for giving law enforcement's false name. Y'all remember, when they called his ass, he said that his name was um, Brent, the younger son, okay? His his little brother, yeah. And then um, $2,400 $2, for possession of a Schedule II controlled substance. So he had drugs on him, and he'd been dealing with some drug problems and all of that. He's now out on bond, um, on bail or whatever, and they basically said if you violate your release, you're going to go back to jail. You have drugs on your ass. You're going to go back to jail. And you're going to spend the rest of the time up in there. And I don't know. Sometimes he's 33 years old. And I know people was getting mad at Nene because she wasn't doing nothing to get him out and all that stuff. And at the end of the day, it's not really her responsibility. That is a grown man. He is 33 years old. He knows exactly what it is that he is doing. And if she, who we, we don't know how long she's been dealing with this, but we do know that he has a problem. Um, and sometimes if you've been in the throes of it and you've been dealing with this situation for a long time and it's going through a whole cycle, you get tired of it. And so sometimes you just got to let them be the person that they're going to be and let them learn the lesson that they're going to learn and stop coming to their aid and defense because it's not helping. 
You got to let them learn that and hit that rock bottom. And that's just what it is. Um, <clears throat> so the girls are pissed off. The girls are pissed off about Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill is going on a 25-year anniversary of her um, album, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill, right? And I have never, never seen somebody get so much praise off of one album and base their whole career off of one album because that's literally all that, they, that she got, that one solo album. But it's so good. You listen to that today, and it's still so good, okay? Like, it's one of the most perfect albums. It really is. And it's a, it's, it's only a few. I only have a handful of albums um, are from a couple of artists that I would say put out, like, a perfect, perfect, stellar album. And that is one for me. That is one for me. And I know she been having issues. There, there, there was an issue or something that was going on. I don't know if she owned the rights to the album. I don't know. But when she performs the songs, she doesn't perform the songs the way that they actually are on the album. She has a different variation of it, and it it it's not my cup of tea, right? Um, but at the same time, we also know that if you're going to see Lauren Hill, be prepared for the possibility that. You're going to see Lauren Hill possibly 15 hours after it says it's supposed to start on the start time. And you're probably going to get like 10 minutes. Okay. If that, you know, be prepared for that. Okay. Um, and I'm saying that because she's on tour right now. She was out there in New Jersey. I think this is her hometown as well. And people are complaining and upset because the show was supposed to start at 730. It did not start until well after probably 10 o'clock, okay? Mind you, people got to go to work the next morning. People are older and all that stuff. But at the same time, don't waste my time. Don't waste my time. And it's one thing to be late to a performance, but you make it up by giving the best performance that you ever done. They said Lauren got up there on that stage and she basically sped up half the songs that she was doing um, you couldn't hear the music. The instruments just was not right. The, the sound wasn't right. She was speeding through the songs. And then it was like a different version of the songs than what they know about. And I'm like, well, if you're a Lauryn Hill fan, you should know that she's not going to sing the actual versions of the song. Nine out of ten. Because that's been happening for years, right? But you should also know that she ain't going to show up on time. <laughs> that has been the running thing. It ain't no running joke. That's just really a running fact. And you literally take a risk going to a Lauryn Hill concert. And then they was like, some people paid $1,200 for the top, for some tickets. And they said some tickets were purchased as high as $1,200. Ain't no way in here. I'm sorry. I love and respect me some Lauryn Hill. I would love to see her in person. But I will not pay for a Lauryn Hill concert ticket. Somebody will have to say, hey... I know so and so and so and so, and they can have a, they can give me, I'm going behind stage and we're gonna have a little sit down with Lauren or whatever. That's the only way that you'll get me to see her. I'm not finna pay with my own money to go see her. No, and I damn sure ain't finna pay no $1,200 for her. I'm not finna $1,200 for a 15 minute set and you three, four hours late. Hell no. Okay, but um, that's y'all fault. I'm going to just have to put that on there. That's Lauren's fault. And we got to ma quit making excuses at this point. It's like, what can we do? She not she, she in her own world. But it's also your fault for uh, freaking going. Because I, I just wouldn't do it. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. I just can't. Um, but anyway, y'all tell me how y'all feel about that. Young Jock. I just want people to shut up. And I just want. And see, this is the whole thing about artist development. And people that don't know how to interview. My whole thing is I need y'all to stop going to Vlad TV and doing these interviews or whatever. And getting these questions that he be setting y'all up and y'all be falling for the trap. 
Do you understand that in this day and age, people do not care if you are for or against the LGBT or whatever? We don't care, okay? And I, I, I know, I know somebody gonna be like, but y'all be this? No, no, we honestly don't care. Well, the ones with sense, we honestly don't care. We don't care if you for us. We don't care if you're against us. Just don't do anything disrespectful to us. We won't do anything disrespectful to you. That's all it is. It's all about respect, right? You know. Um, but, and I, I keep bringing this up because it's it's like. When you want to rile up the people, let's throw in a little gay stuff, okay? Let's get your opinion. Let's ask a rapper what he feel about gay stuff, okay? And my whole thing is, why are these rappers that we don't hear anything about and haven't heard any new material from in years and ain't literally nothing happened going on with them, how come they keep on going to Vlad TV? Is it a contract that they got that they supposed to do X amount of interviews per every quarter or whatever? Because Boosie and Young Jock be on Black Vlad TV every other fucking week. I'm like, how much? Is, what are y'all talking about? You might as well just start a podcast with each other, okay? And just talk about worthy this because how, what 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 do the people need to know about you these days? Okay, we do not care. Nobody's asking. You know what I'm saying? And you know. At the end of the day, we know that hip-hop is homophobic, okay? We just know that. It is what it is. It's always been like that. Some people are accepted. Some people are not. That's just how it is, okay? We're not begging to be accepted by y'all or whatever. It is, well, rappers and all that stuff because some of y'all is undercover. It is what it is. No disrespect. But at the end of the day, don't use us for clickbait and to get the conversation started and get riled up and to get some attention on you because it's not going to go the way that you think it's going to go. You're going to fuck around and get your feelings hurt. Young job was given a question and asked, would you turn down or would you take 200, would you perform at an LGBT um, event if they was offering you uh, a quarter million dollars, $250,000? Because they was going off of what Boosie had said, that he turned down $250,000 to perform at an um, LGBT event because he's he doesn't agree with it. It's fine if you don't want to agree with it. I have no issue with that. But my whole thing about that whole thing is we know Boosie is questionable. He's always talking about gay people, but also it's Boosie. Who the fuck is paying $250,000 at an LGBT event for Boosie to show up when they already know that he's homophobic as hell? That was a whole lie in itself. Nothing about that was truthful, okay? That's that. Seconding, Young Jock, when was the last time that you saw $250,000 together in one time, in one setting, without installments? Exactly. It's been a long time for you, okay? Um, Third, well, secondly, who the fuck is paying $250,000 at an LGBT event or any event to see a washed up rapper that only had a few hits back in the day? Way back in the day, and especially at an LGBT event, at an LGBT event with black folks or whatever, especially, okay, Girl, most of them is young. They barely know it's going down, okay? They barely know eat bubble gum or whatever, any, mini, miny, mo. how many you want to go. I know you see it. They barely know that, okay? If they do, it's, it's, it's very faint. And they probably just heard about it on TikTok. That's just it, okay? They don't know your catalog like that. So that'd be a waste on the promoter's side to even try to get you. That's one. That's, that's, that's two, I should say. Ain't no LGBT event throwing out no $250,000 for no Young Jock, for no Boosie. Baby, you got to be a fucking Sierra. You got to be a fucking Kelly Rowland, okay? You got to be a goddamn uh, uh, Rihanna. Hell, they can't even afford that. That's too fucking much, okay? Unless these are white promoters and all this stuff and a white girl, you ain't finna get nobody paying no $250,000 to see neither one of y'all at no LGBT event, okay? Fuck that, all right? Second, the third, third, he said he don't want to do that, like singing up there, you know, and, and, and the guys having lustful eyes for him. Now, sir, you could have just said, no, I just, $250,000, that does sound like a good amount of money, but, you know, it just goes against my principles. I just, you know, I, I don't care what people do in their life. It's just not a lifestyle that I agree with or whatever. So, no, I just won't participate. I would have been fine with that. 
I would have been fine with that. But for you to sit your ass there and say that, you know, uh, I don't want to be singing this going down and having dudes having lustful eyes for me, looking at me lustfully. I've been gay for over 30 years. And I'm only 36, okay? I've been gay my whole life. I've been around a lot of gay people. I follow a lot of gay people. A lot of gay people follow me. And I have never, not once in real life, on my timelines, on a video, at an event, or ever in my life, see somebody say, I want a piece of young child who was gay. Never. Never. And see, that is the misconception that I feel like a lot of straight people get get when they talk about the LGBT community, like gay women, or lesbians, and gays, okay? The main thing is, I don't want to be around you because I don't want you hitting on me and all that stuff and trying to... Baby, just like you possibly or straight people, heterosexual people have standards, okay? And you wouldn't go and fuck around and try to hit on or try to get with every person that you see that's straight and heterosexual. Same thing as us. Just because I am a lesbian does not mean I'm going to be attracted to or I'm going to take any and everything that just comes my way and be just happy with it. That I'm going to hit on everything or every woman that comes my way. I have my standards. I have my type. I have a preference. You know, and if you lie and say that you ain't got no preference, use a goddamn lie. All right? Same thing with gay men. They're not going to hit on everything, especially there are some that will hit on a straight man, but they still have standards in that. And I guarantee you, you ain't it. Okay? Like, come on. <laughs> Y'all got to stop. Y'all got to stop. It's so funny. Um, It's going down. Nigga, what? The last time I seen Young Jock perform was on Love and Hip Hop when he was going to that club out here in Chicago and I ain't never heard of this club and it was so fucking small that the ceiling was damn, if he would have got on his tippy toe, if he would have extended and got on his tippy toes, literally, you know, um, he would have hit the ceiling. That's how fucking tall, hit the ceiling it was and the club was so fucking packed and you can't tell me that, that he got no, he ain't even getting no $50,000 for that. You can't tell me that. You cannot tell me that, Okay. $250, $2,500, maybe. But not, uh, girl, uh, uh, shut up, okay? Um, Jeezy was talking about how, in an interview with um, Tamara Hall, about how, you know, he has a new memoir, Adversity for Sale. You got to believe it. Um, and said that the events made him realize that he was struggling with depression. He is 46 years old. He was struggling with depression for the, for eight years. So basically, and, and, and again, I just like the fact that we are talking about mental health and all of that because a lot of these niggas that's out here on the streets, and I hate to say it like that, but that's just what it is. These dudes on the streets, um, you can't tell me that they don't deal with depression and that's why when some of them that do transition from being off the streets and doing all that, and then they do their music, they get into the industry in some way or some fashion, you hear it in the music, some of the stuff that they're saying, and you can tell that they going through some stuff because they didn't sing a whole lot of stuff. They didn't did a whole lot of stuff that they shouldn't did. And so it's trauma behind that. And, of course, they're not going to get help for it. So, yeah. I'm not surprised at him saying that he was suffering through depression. A lot of us, I feel like, I, I could be wrong because I don't know for sure, but I feel like depression is one of those things that is one of those, like one of the most common mental illnesses that health issues, mental health issues that a lot of people have. Um, because I don't know too many that have not suffered from depression at one point in time. Whether it was short, whether it was long, whether it was minimal, whether it was deep, you know, um, just about everybody I know has suffered with a form of depression. And it doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make you a crazy person or nothing like that. You know, everybody, regardless of how you want to say you grew up in this happy home or whatever, everybody has had a trauma somewhere, somehow, Okay. I've had, and I've, I've been very vocal about my depression, you know what I'm saying? Um, and 
I literally just had something that happened earlier that I just, <laughs> I don't want it to send me into a tailspin, but again, I'll talk about that later. And, um, because I literally just got a text message about it and it's just, it's just mind blowing. I like, a, anyway, depression is hell sometimes. Okay. And if you've been out there on the streets, you've seen your friends get murdered, you're going, you got people in jail, um, you seeing crack fiends and all that stuff, like, that shit is depressing. And, and then come to the realization that, yeah, I help contribute to some of the stuff that's going out, yeah, that's depressing as hell. I, I just want more people to talk about it and not be afraid to. And I do see a change that's happening with, you know, the community where people actually discuss their mental health, and I love that. I really do love that. Um, uh, that's good. Anyway. But, yeah. That's what's going on with him. Um, what? I'm so sorry, y'all. If it sounds like I'm distracted, I <laughs> will tell you what happened. Okay. Okay, because I really wasn't going to say nothing. My father passed away earlier. Okay. Um, and actually, he's been dead for a few days. Or I don't know how long he's been dead. They just found him. I just found out earlier today. Uh, so that's what's going on right here, right now. And I know somebody gonna be like, oh my God, Ashley, how are you still doing? Baby, it ain't really hit me. I really barely had a relationship with him and I'm still trying to figure it out. Like maybe I'm still in shock. I don't know what I feel right about now. And so I keep getting messages or whatever about the stuff. Girl, I don't even know what his, I don't even know what to do. Honestly, and I, I'm letting my sister handle it right about now. It is what it is. I don't know. I don't know. So that if y'all, that's what's distracting me right now. But it is what it is. Um, that's what I was gonna expand on later. Nah, whatever. I don't know. Like I don't know what to do with a situation like this. I y'all heard me talk about him before. I just I really don't know. Um. That girl that said they with me, y'all remember that girl that said um that basketball player that got beat up by the other basketball player. Now she saying that um it didn't happen. She said he ain't never put his hands on her. He ain't do nothing. So what happened? Then they had pictures of her getting her ass whooped or whatever. I'm so confused. I am confusion. Like did she get paid off or something? Ugh, it's crazy out here. It really is. But um. Let me see if it's something else that I need to talk about. Well, that's it. Anyway, let me get up off here because I'm about to start rambling about something because I was about to tell y'all, girl, I got to go figure out what these people want, okay? Um, girl, just pray for us. It is what it is, okay? Um. <laughs> Anyway, um, y'all have enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your week. If this video just sounds scatterbrained, I just really just told y'all exactly why, okay? But hey, it is what it is. I'm good, so you ain't got to worry about that. Well, I'm good for right now. But um, I will see y'all later, all right? Y'all enjoy the rest of y'all week. <laughs> Peace.